So when you declare them dead, for you they are dead. As far as that person is concerned, in a way, all that's happened is, he's disembodied, he's lost his body. When somebody dies, we say, this person is no more. That's not true. That person is no more the way you know them, but they still very much exist. There are innumerable such beings all around you, if you do… whether you know it or you don't know it. The disembodied being is in a certain state of pleasantness. It is this that is being referred to as heaven, because they have left their physical body in a certain state of awareness. They enjoy the sweetness at a certain period of time. Sadhguru, you said about life and that brings a big question what doctors have about life. Now they say we have one trillion cells in our body mm -hmm. and each of these cells is living by itself. And when you say a patient is no more, it's just that the brain dies after two or three minutes, but still a large part of his body is still alive. That is changed now. Doctors are saying the brain lives for over ten years, ten hours. Today, the new. Yeah. So he is dead, but the brain is living. His skin, his muscles, his bones live for many hours. So we have said he is dead, but a large part of his body is still alive. So, and these cells, even when after the patient is dead, you take these cells and. Those of them, who, those of you who are all shaving every day, even after you're dead, we still have to shave you. You know this. Yeah, that's <laughs> the heart grows. That is why I'm ready, you know. <laughs> now, if you asked why, uh, if somebody is dead, still cells, some of the cells are active. It has been recorded up to ten hours, there is a lot of activity and actually the brain goes into a certain level of activity and produces certain very surprising elements in the last… in ten hours after somebody is medically dead. As I said, dead bodies are given a shave up to ten, eleven days. Why this is so? What we are calling as life physically is a mechanism on many different levels. There is hardware and there is software. You are core of hardware, bones. Uh, the software is equally important. Otherwise, how would a cell know that it's a human cell, that it is not a pig cell or a tree cell or something else? How does it know? Because there is an entire software, there is memory, evolutionary memory, genetic memory, karmic memory, there are varieties of memories imposed on every cell in the system so that it never gets confused. If you eat dog food for three days, you will not become a dog, isn't it? because the memory is entrenched in this. So there is a whole software. The software package is actually bigger than the hardware, much bigger. And uh, it is energized by what is we are considering as a life force. In yoga, we call this prana. It manifests itself in five basic dimensions. There are other forms to it which gets too complicated five basic forms. These are called pranavayu, samanavayu, apanavayu, udhanavayu and vyana. These have different functions. Prana is related to breath, respiratory action and thought process. If the pranavayu depletes, your respiratory action will go away. So immediately doctor checks and says, he's dead, they'll try to pump their chest, if he doesn't come back, he's dead. Respiration and your pulmonary action are very directly connected. Once respiration stops, that process will naturally come to an end. So pranavayu is gone. It's not like one after another they will go. They will go at the same time, but one goes means this is gone. If samanavayu goes, this is in charge of generating heat in the system. So once samana you, vayu starts receding, the body starts getting cold and it also starts becoming stiff. Once apana vayu starts receding in a major way, 
than <clears throat> the sensory aspect of it, we must understand this. You may check somebody's breath and declare them dead, but they can still feel sensations. There have been any number of cases where people get terrified because a dead body moves a little bit. This has happened again and again, many, many times, that when he's been medically declared dead, there are twitchings in the body that happen in a very mild way because the sensory activity is still on, still life is not fully convinced that it's finished. It is still making an effort of its own. When Udhanavayu goes away, then the buoyancy is gone. When I say buoyancy, see, you may weigh seventy or eighty or whatever number of… I'm sorry, maybe you weigh fifty or fifty-five kilograms, <laughs> whatever is your weight. Let's say you're very happy and alive right now, you don't feel fifty kilograms on you, isn't it? Hello? Yes. It is there. If you stand on the scale, it is there. But when you walk, it is not there simply because this udhana creates a buoyancy. It makes you less available to gravity. There are yogic practices to activate this. There's a whole school of udhan in China where uh, you might have seen those movies, uh, Hollywood movies, uh, what is that? Crouching Tiger or something, something. What? Yes. So these are udan schools where they have mastery or udana where they can float around a little bit. Well, little exaggerated in the movies but becomes lighter, more buoyant body. For a martial arts fighter, to be buoyant is important. There have been many cases where certain ballet dancers and martial arts experts have shown what is physically not possible they have done by leaping up to heights which all physicists believe is simply impossible but they've gone beyond that level simply by creating more buoyancy. So udhana is in charge of buoyancy. Once udhana starts receding, suddenly body becomes heavy. Always it was the same weight. Weight does not increase, but you can feel the weight much more simply because udhana is gone. This doctors may know, maybe doctors don't do it, the people who work in the hospitals may know, carrying a live person and a dead person, there's a big difference. Simply because udhana is gone, there's buoyant… there's no buoyancy. The fourth dimension is called vyana. This is preservative in nature. If vyana recedes, even when you're alive, body will begin to rot. There are certain uh, types of snake venoms which can do this. If they bite you, you will not die. But literally, parts of the body will start falling apart simply because vyana will recede and it will start falling apart. So, once vyana recedes, the rotting process will begin. There are systems in yoga where we want all the seven to go reasonably together within one and a half hours we want it to go. In normal death, depending upon the age of a person, how vibrant a particular body is, it may take a long time. When I say long time, up to fourteen hours it may take. Vyana may take up to fourteen days to leave. This is the reason why in this culture you have rituals running up to fourteen days, because they feel the Vyana may be still there, because when you bury a person, the Vyana may be still hovering there, so up to fourteen days. That is the reason why within one and a half hours, in this… <laughs> in this culture, that was the rule, if somebody dies within an hour and a half, you must cremate them. But then mistakes happened. When they were still alive, somebody put them on the funeral pyre, so they stretched it to four hours. Within four hours, you must create… cremate. But today, uh, there are issues, all kinds of issues about it. So, uh, people are waiting for one day, two days, daughter is in America, she has to come, she'll come after three days and uh, they will wait. But the idea is, for the one who is dead, we must understand this. You don't diagnose people as dead, you declare them dead, right? There's a difference <laughs> So when you declare them dead, for you they are dead. As far as that person is concerned, in a way, all that's happened is, he's disembodied, he's lost his body. All his life he lived, thinking he's a body, never realizing the physical mass that we carry is an accumulation. 
from this planet. He never realized that. When suddenly he slips out the body, he tends to hover around the body because he's lost his discriminatory intelligence. Once you leave the body, the discriminatory intellect is not there, so this tends to hover around that body. So in this culture we said, the moment we are sure that somebody is dead for sure, you must immediately cremate them because it's good for that dead, so they know the game is up. And it's also good for the living. You will see, if somebody very dear to you is dead and their body is here, you keep on hallucinating, maybe they're just sleeping, maybe they will sit up, maybe some miracle will happen, maybe something else will happen, you know, this will go on unnecessarily. You will see people are crying and uh, big emotional drama is happening, but the moment you cremate them, you will see everybody become silent. Have you noticed this? Always. Because now everybody knows the game is up. It's for the living and for the dead. So about life leaving the system, it is so entrenched. It is not something, poop, it'll go away like this. In stages, it goes away. Because it's in stages it came in, it's in stages it'll go away. The question is, is there rebirth? If it's there, what is the basis for one being to go from one birth to another? What is it that carries a person from one to another? Now if you need to understand this, you must have some understanding of the mechanics of who you are. I'm talking about the mechanics of how a human being is built. See, when you say I'm a human being, the outermost periphery is the physical body. In yoga, we look at everything as body because it is easier for you to understand that way. So we see the body has five dimensions or five sheets. Physical body is known as Annamaya Kosha. Annamaya Kosha means, Anna means the food. This is food body. Next one is called Manomaya Kosha. That means it's the mental body. The third one is called Pranamaya Kosha, which means the energy body. Physical body, mental body, energy body. All these three dimensions are physical. They are physical existence. Physical body is very gross, mental body is subtler, energy body is even subtler, but all these three are physical. It's just like the light bulb is physical, you can see that. The electricity behind also is physical, isn't it? The wire that connects is also physical, the electrons that flow through the wire also are physical existence. So similarly, physical body, mental body, pranic body, all are physical dimensions of life. This physical dimension of life, both in all these three dimensions, carries the imprints of karma. On the body it is imprinted, on the mind it's imprinted, and on the energy it's imprinted. This karmic imprints or the karmic structure is what holds it together. Karma is the cement which holds you to the physical body. Karma is the bondage, at the same time it's only because of karmic stuff you can hold on to the body and be here. This is where spirituality seems to be difficult because if you try to take it away, it doesn't work. If you try to add, it doesn't work. You need to be just there. If you're just there, it's a moment. Now, the next two dimensions are called Vijnanamaya Kosha and Anandamaya Kosha. Vijnanamaya Kosha is non-physical but related to the physical. It is like a transient state. Anandamaya Kosha is completely non-physical. And Anandamaya Kosha means it's the bliss body. There is a bliss body inside which is hundred percent non-physical. It has no form of its own. Only if the energy body, the mental body and the physical body are in shape, it can hold the bliss body in shape. If these things are taken away, the bliss body will just 
become a part of the cosmos. So whatever you are referring to as Atma or the soul is a fiction actually. In a sense, people are describing a certain limitation of the non-physical as a soul. But the body for the soul is still your karma. If the karmic structure is completely dismantled, there is no soul, everything merges into everything else. What is referred to as Mahasamadhi or Mahaparinirvana is just this, that you slowly understand where the keys are and dismantle the karmic structure, structure so that you become truly no more. When somebody dies, we say this person is no more. That's not true. That person is no more the way you know them, but they still very much exist. Now if you dismantle the karmic structure hundred percent, now you merge with the existence. This is what is referred to as mukti, mahasamadhi. In Hindu tradition it is referred as, to as mukti. In yogic tradition it is referred to as mahasamadhi. In the Buddhist way it is called as Mahaparinirvana, generally in English we are saying liberation. Liberation means becoming free from the very process of life and birth and death. Liberation means becoming free from the basic structures of body and mind. And for all this the karmic structure is the strings which hold these things together. So when a person dies, Obviously, the physical body is something that you borrowed from the earth. This body is just earth, isn't it? You understand? This physical body is just a piece of earth which is right now prancing around like this. But you have to pay it back, atom to atom, no interest though. But you have to pay back every atom. You won't be allowed to carry a single atom from this planet. Nobody has managed it. <laughs> <clears throat> physical body will fall apart. The mental body and the pranic body, depending upon the strength of your karma, goes on. If the karmic structure is very intense, unfinished, then it has to finish it. If the karma has become weak because it has run its course, then it very easily finds another body. If it has to find another body, the intensity of the structure should come down, it should become passive. If it is very intense, it cannot find, it has to hang. So this is what you are referring to as ghosts. Somebody is dead, his karmic structure is still intense because it's not over. Now he needs much more time to find another body, he still exists and the more intense his karmic structure is, the more visible he becomes or more experientially available to people. There are innumerable such beings all around you, if you do, whether you know it or you don't know it. But most of them you won't feel because their karma is dissipated. They're just waiting for more dissipation before they find another body. But if their karma is very intense, this is why they told you in the tradition, if somebody dies unnaturally, either by accident or suicide or some other way, they will become ghosts. It is not so, everybody becomes. It is just that they are more experienceable. They are more available to your experience because they have more intense karmic structures. So you people miss experience them little more than other beings who die of old age. If one completely completes his allotted karma for that life, he will die just like that, without disease, without accident, without any injury, when one dies simply like that, that person may find another body within hours. This is why in this tradition always they said, if one completes his life and dies peacefully, it's the best way to die because he need not hang around immediately it goes on. Now when you walk the spiritual path, the ultimate goal for every spiritual seeker is, he wants to break this whole process. Or otherwise, to use an analogy, we can say, 
What you call as my soul right now is like a bubble. The outer periphery of the bubble is your karmic structure. Inside, there is air. Suppose you blow the bubble, you burst the bubble, where is the air? Where is your air? There is no such thing as your air, it's become part of everything. So what you call a soul is fixtures because there is no such thing as your soul and my soul and somebody else's soul. Right now, this unboundedness is contained in the limited karmic structure. So it makes you believe as if this is a separate, separate entity. If you take away the keys which hold the karmic structure, then it just collapses. So, this afterlife, next uh, birth, don't believe all this nonsense. But right now if you sit here and just close your eyes, you can clearly see more than this body you are, isn't it? Your physical body is something that you have loaned from the planet on which you're living. When the time comes, the planet will claim it back. But the other dimensions of you, especially the karmic shell, continues to play. If it is in a certain level of awareness, the disembodied being is in a certain state of pleasantness. It is this that is being referred to as heaven because they have left their physical body in a certain state of awareness. They enjoy the sweetness at a certain period of time, a holiday, a vacation before you take on another physical body. Similarly, if people live in certain states of fear, anxiety, anger, in certain states of ignorance, the karmic shell has acquired a certain kinds of unpleasantness about itself. This unpleasantness is what we refer to as hell. Normally when somebody dies, we say, this person is no more, but that's not the truth. He's no more the way you experience him, but he still is in any other way. Don't take body lightly. It's not a small imprisonment. Unless you break it open, you can't leave it, isn't it? But when one realizes how they got in, now they know how to leave. A person consciously sheds the body without damaging the body in any way. Like you shed your clothes, you shed your body fully consciously. Then we say this is Mahasamadhi. When a person lives like this, that's the end, truly no more. Once again, whatever you call as myself, has just dissolved and become a part of the process. So that's it, nothing more.